welcome to our conversation on the Universal Book Links. My name is Dave Chesson. I will be the moderator. Uh, my goal here is to pick at these guys. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's right. Try to make it as hard as possible. Ask some of the hard questions that are out there. But more importantly, we're going to start by creating a base knowledge and foundational understanding on what Universal Book Links are, as well as associate and affiliate, and how authors can really use these tools to improve their sales and to make even more revenue beyond that. However, though, there's a couple of pitfalls, and there's a couple of questions, and there's I want to get some dirt on some of the uh, the bad markets out there, and so I'm going to be asking those. Now, one of my rules for this, though, is that sometimes when we have these groups, uh, some of the participants, I don't think it's going to be this case, but some of the participants can go on and on, and they can really eat up a lot of the time. So I'm going to give each person two minutes, and then when the two-minute mark happens, I'm going to go and give an embarrassing bald eagle caw. So then we know. So in case you guys know, that will be, it doesn't stop them. However, though, if I got a double caw, then I'm just going to be like, mm, okay. And that way we can keep the conversation going uh, and make sure we get to the good stuff. Because I'm prior military, and we are going to hit that 40 minute mark. <laughs> okay? All right. So with that, Let's start by talking about what the Universal Book Link is. Okay? Now, a Universal Book Link is the ability for there to be one short link that points to a page that has your books on it. Okay? Now, this can be incredibly important because when you do your also buy page, and we're going to talk about some of the other ways that you can truly use this, okay? um, I might be a fan of the Nook. I might be a person who really likes to buy books on Kobo. We never know. So you as an author would have to put a link to your book on all those markets all over the place. And it's just a link soup. However, though, you can create one link that has a lot of really cool things beyond this. Okay, we're going to get into it. But when you click on that, it presents the reader with options. Okay, which one would you like? And you, can, if you can do this right, there's even more things you can gain from it. You can gain analytics, understanding. You can gain even more revenue. There's all these things which you're going to get into, okay? But there's a couple of pitfalls. So like I said, let's go ahead and turn it over to the panel here. And we're going to start by having each person here say who they are, their background, who they work for, and then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of this thing. Start with you. How's it going, everyone? I'm Austin. I'm with Booklinker. Uh, my background is in affiliate marketing and in content marketing. I'm just slowly getting into the author space and learning a ton at this conference. Um, but I'm here to help authors sell more books with Universal Book Links. Awesome. Uh, my name's uh, Mark Lefebvre, or Mark to Digital, if you'd rather not prefer that, because I work with Draft to Digital. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm actually representing the books to read.com, which is Universal Book Linker. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to get into. Get into the fisticuffs that we're going to eventually get. <laughs> <laughs> eventually you're over there. <laughs> uh, I'm Ben Zach. Hi, I'm, I'm uh, from the Author Helper Suite. We used to be Reader Links, but we changed our name because we are not just links, we have a whole bunch of other tools. Um, I'm basically the um, help with community building and uh, one of the co founders. And uh, also, if you have opened a ticket, that's me or Benna, our new employee. So if you, uh, if you know me already, I'm sorry. <laughs> something broke, right? It's something broke, right? It's all me. Uh, Jesse Lights, I am the uh, co-founder of Genius Link. Um, we are a link management platform that uh, obviously supports the author industry, but uh, a handful of industries as well. Um, and we uh, were fortunate enough to acquire Booklinker, what, 10 years ago. Uh, so Booklinker sits underneath the Genius Link brand. It's the Genius Link technology, but you know, it's two different websites. Uh, yeah, and uh, Genius Link is, is kind of the uh, bigger, older sibling of, of Booklinker, but yeah, the two play. Yeah. Excellent. So we understand exactly what the Universal Book Link can do. Can I challenge you on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you told a great story about how you know, uh, Universal Book Link does a great job with the why. But I think, at least for us, Universal Book Link started with international, making sure that inside the Amazon ecosystem, where love them or hate them, a lot of us are, making sure that you support all those different storefronts, right? Today's count is 22 different storefronts. One link that works across 22 different storefronts versus just 22 links is obviously going to save your tweets, it's going to save all, hopefully all your marketing because it, it just works. So that's, yeah, I think the international story 
is important just as much as the multi-retailers. How many people retail. understand what that is? Uh, do, you, do you guys understand the auto geotargeting, or how many That's people don't understand hands. that? Okay. Yeah. Most yeah. Of them would so let's go ahead and <clears throat> Martin. Would you like to kind of explain geo? Uh, <clears throat> how many links? people don't live in the U.S.? I'm a Canadian. Okay. So other awesome. countries? Yellow. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, when you have an Amazon link, for example, uh, obviously Amazon.com is the world's biggest bookstore, but um, I'm in Canada. I purchase from the Canadian site. They, you might be purchasing from the Italian site or the, the UK or whatever. And so um, all the other retailers, in Google and Apple and Kobo, Nook's only in the US, so who cares? There's only one link ever now. But with all the other major retailers, you have geotargeting. And so if I click the link on a universal book link from whatever platform it is, it should know, hey, this guy's in Canada. Send him to Kobo Canada. Send him to Apple Canada, as opposed to uh, just a generic link where you go, oh, this is the US site, I can't buy, I have to go find the thing and click over to the right site. So that's a huge benefit. Even if you are exclusive to Amazon, there's 22 stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Mark, can you go a step further and just kind of walk somebody through the process of building one of these links? What would that look like? Okay, so for example, I'll, I'll use books to read.com as an example. Uh, free tool, you go in and you usually start with your Amazon link in the US because that's where a lot of authors are. You drop in the link to Amazon US, and then we will send a bunch of crawlers to all the major, the major sites to go and auto find links on Kobo and Apple and Nook and all the other places. Build that in, and now you have a single link that you can geo-target, but also to the other retailers. There are manual ways you can go ahead and add other storefronts that may be perfect for you, but haven't been automated yet. And it's not just free books. You can go in and add print book links in different formats and audio book links. And so that's the, the fundamental of building that, controlling it. And there's other things we can do with that on, on all the platforms that you can put in affiliates. I'm sure we'll get into that. But then looking at the analytics and saying, okay, where are people going? On Books to Read, for example, if somebody uh, clicks a link to go to Kindle or to Nook, for example, or Kobo, it'll say, do you want to make this your preferred store? And if they say yes, Anytime that person goes to anyone's books to read link, it'll automatically reroute them to the preferred store, so it saves them that extra click. It'll automatically apply the affiliate code if you put one in. So the whole idea behind it is to save the author time. I don't want to have to put 97 links on my website. Well, ideally, you should be sending people to your website, not to a retail website. But uh, a universal book link can help save you manually having to put all the logos of all the companies and all the geo targets. So that, that's one of the benefits, I think. So we've talked about uh, places, well, we talked about the one instance where you, know, you might want to put in your also buy page, where therefore you can list like the books, and when they click it, then they can purchase the other books that you've read. What are some of the other places or other usage for these links, other than just the also buy? Then let me pass this one to you. Well, we handle things a little bit differently, I think, in, in the Author Helper Suite. We don't. We have an, a My Books page, which actually offers links to a bunch of different services, the audio book, the review page as well, so you can you know, have this My Books page as a public page, and people can click on to review it instantly. Um, and it covers, it's international, so it covers all markets. But we basically, um, we, we allow people to make their own links at, and can customize more what the, what the experience is. So we'll actually ask, uh, the author, where are you putting this link? You know, are you putting it in inside? You know, on your on your site? Are you putting it in a Facebook post, etc.? And so, and and uh, where is it going to land? On which specific page? So we actually allow you to go to Amazon, to Apple, to Barnes and Noble, to Kobo, even BookBub. So other services that aren't necessarily <coughs> booksellers, but social services uh, that are book uh, focused, good reason, good good reasons as well. So um, we're a little bit different in that sense that we don't offer a, a, a universal book link. We have my books page, which does provide that. But we have a, lot, a little bit more customization because of the links that people use in the service. Um, we we t attach to the KDP sales and the ad the ads that people run because we also allow people to import their Facebook and Amazon ads as well as their KDP sales. So we can kind of link the the link with the ad with the with the sale, you don't get one-to-one -one conversion, of course, but you get an idea of kind of the full circle of how things are, are going and you got to see a trend. So, so links we handle them a little bit differently. Like, I, I can't really speak to that, per se. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anybody else on the panel that would like to speak about where to put the links? Um, okay. Other benefits? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure it's been mentioned so far, but one thing that I assume most Universal Book Links will let you do is create a custom vanity URL which for people that see the link destination raw, 
if you can customize it and, and, and make it yours, you'll, you'll notice a click-through rate that's, that's massively increased. So like social media profiles, you only have typically one link in, your, in a bio link. So you can put it there and we'll have a much higher click-through rate than just a sloppy Amazon with a bunch of characters after that. Um, so yeah, social media accounts is a, a big area for universal book links. Back matter. Back matter. Yeah. So yeah. back matter, yeah. social media. Yeah. Are there any other spots that you guys recommend? Yeah, What's yeah. Out, but that's yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I missed the question. I misunderstood the question. Yeah, absolutely. Put it on the website. Would probably be the best thing to do. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we kind of have an understanding of these of these links, some of the benefits, and some of the places that authors can use them. Let's talk about affiliate though. Now, either Amazon has an affiliate program called Amazon Associate. That allows people to, you know, at this point, you can once you have an Amazon associate account, you can build a link, and you can point to any product on that store. And if anybody purchases that product, or purchases anything on the store within 24 hours of clicking your link, you get a percentage of that sale. Now this is really cool because uh, first off, you've got a new revenue stream. All you're doing, you can point to your own book, and when people click on it, right, you either make a little extra on your book sale. Or maybe it's Black Friday and they went out and they got the big screen TV and they got the other things and you get a <laughs> chunk of that as well. However, though, there's there's a little bit of, of concern from authors, though, that the use of associate links inside of universal links inside of books uh, violates Amazon's terms and can get authors in trouble. Uh, who would like to tackle that question? Well, I mean, we do. Ultimately, you know, we... we comply with, with Amazon's terms, but we really push the authors to comply with Amazon's terms. So, so can you break that out a bit more? Well, well, I mean, specifically, it's going to end up being the individual author's choice whether they're going to put it in their back matter or not, ultimately. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to, we, you want to provide Amazon, you know, follow the terms, make sure that the user agent includes where the link's coming from. You don't want to follow you know, the, tech, the technical terms, which is what we can do. But ultimately, you see it throughout our, our site, throughout our service, it's like, follow the terms and we link to the terms. Um, I think it's worth saying real quick, sorry, yeah. sorry, there, there are two terms, right? There's the associates yes. terms and there's the terms associated yes. with yeah. you know, KDP, et cetera. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a bit of a maze, but good reading. If they, 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 had, they had a writer do it. Oh, it's page turning. <laughs> Does that mean does that make sense? I don't know. So the question then is is that what does an author have to do in order to put a, and we'll give one particular case, because I think one of the biggest uses of universal book links is putting it in your back matter. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the things I highly recommend authors do, is always have that also buy page, because that's continuous sales of people who read a book and liked it. Like, mm -hmm. that's the best time to strike when the iron's hot, is right. when they just finished your book and they want their next book to read. So give them that list. Yeah. Or if you've got a series, for sure mm -hmm. use that. Uh, universal book link in there. So, what does an author have to do in order to, just for this case, use an Amazon associate link? Can someone yeah, go for that? So, Amazon's associates rules is it's a super long document, but the main way that you can get in trouble if you're an author is including an affiliate link in offline material, which would be like back matter, or even something like an email marketing blast or, or a text would be considered offline yeah. material. So you can't link to an Amazon, you can't generate an Amazon affiliate link in any offline material. Yep. But if you use a bridge page, something like one of the tools up here today, um, that kind of bypasses that in a, a compliant manner, where instead of going straight to the affiliate link page, you're going to bridge page, or then, which is posted online, and then they can go buy what they wanted to buy and allow you to earn a commission as compliant in that way. That's because the link itself doesn't have the affiliate tag in it. It gets appended after the customer gets routed to that site and then rerouted. So that's how it, that's how it's compliant. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now, is there something I have to do in my Amazon associate account in order to basically get Amazon to say, okay, it's cool to yeah. come from that you spot? You have to list your the social media you use. You have to list your site um, so that they know who you are and where you post. So you got to make sure they keep you keep that page up to date. <laughs> Because they will catch you if you do, if you suddenly make another Instagram account or start doing TikTok, just make sure you go to your Amazon associate page or put your affiliate links on other websites, yeah. or et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, in, in case for those who aren't familiar with Amazon Associate, when you are a part of it, uh, there is a section in settings where you can basically tell Amazon these are the places that I will post links on. 
Uh, that could be your website, that could be your social media profile. And then from that point on, Amazon's like, okay, cool, if people are making purchases from this location, we're cool with it. They get really angry though, when purchases are being made from something else, or they can't track it. Now, the best way to get your account shut down is to put an affiliate link in an email. You, if you do an email blast and you just put an Amazon associate link in there, you will get your account shut down because they can't track where it comes from. They don't like so that. Yeah. They do not like that. That's a quick way to lose your account. So um, in this case, what we're trying to say is, is that if you're using one of these uh, universal book link services, you can generate your link and then you, and again, different ways from each one, but you can put, you can make it an Amazon associate link from there. You just need to make sure that you've got an approval from where it's coming from. And from all everyone here, that would not violate Amazon's. Yeah, Technically, is. no. Um, yeah, you you have that page. We've had some deep discussions with Amazon because we yeah we call them choice pages. It's it's something we're we're pushed quite hard. Um, Amazon shouldn't have an issue with it. Technically, it's fine. They do recommend that you also have that link coming from a source that they can find it. So again, in that your settings page, we list the different places. If you're recommending a book from the newsletter, make sure there's also a book link in your, your web page as well because Amazon, Big Brother, is paying attention. They're crawling your site, they're looking for those affiliate links. So if they see a source that's online, they can attribute back to those sales, and then you also use it in a, a choice page or bridge page as well, you're gonna be 100% fine. You should still be fine. Technically, we haven't had an issue with it, you know, using the bridge page as well. But again, with Amazon, it often pays to be doubly sure that you're, you're crossing all the T's, yeah. dotting all the I's, and the lowercase J's. Yeah. <laughs> when, you get that, when you get that newsletter that's been updated, really read it. I mean, it, it, it's it's important. I think they just recently updated it um, in October. Um, it isn't the best reading. I'm, I'm lying. It's not a page turner. But it's really, it's, this is your business. There's an audiobook version of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Red by, by, by Leonard Nimoy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's dated, but, um, no, so it's, it's, it's worth it. It's your business. you got to take care of your business. Don't think you're off the radar. These, they, they are amazing at, at finding us. And, and, you know, it's their business, so more power to them. So just to take that one step further, yeah. there's, there's definitely different ways of pissing off Amazon, as probably a lot of us know. Yeah. Uh, there are other affiliates out there. But yeah, yeah, I'm we'll sure we'll get that as well. <laughs> so you often just get a warning when they find that your links are coming from a different source. And they'll give you usually approximately five business days to make that correction, um, and then you're you're back to being good. If you and I think you mentioned this in your presentation today, if you have all your affiliate stuff sent to an email that you don't check regularly, those five days can disappear quickly. And it's usually a very easy thing to, to fix. Right? You go back to your settings, you add you know where the source is, and you should be good to go. Um, if if you miss that warning window, um, then they'll typically go with a, an account ban, and it's really hard to come back from an account ban. Um, so warnings. It's a slap on the wrist, it's a pain in the butt, it's a little stressful, but they can be taken care of. Um, but if you guys are scared, I would say, well then, that maybe you don't do the affiliate link. Right, that's like right. that's the other, that's that's the other right, option. That's right, yeah. absolutely. That's, so what it comes, that's where the revenue is. It's, it's an option you can add into your universal link. Right, and that's the yeah. affiliate revenue, um, it's, it's a little bit trickier, right? You have 180 days to make three sales to stay in the associates program. If you miss that window, they'll, they'll kick you out, you can reapply, it's not a hard ban. Um, but often, unfortunately, people will be kind of intermittent about when they apply their affiliate tracking information, therefore they're not going to generate much for sales, which again is you know, a reason why you know, adding your affiliate information to a universal book linking tool ensures that all your affiliate links, or all your, sorry, universal book links are carrying that affiliate and it starts to add up. So if you're going to do affiliate, it's best to kind of commit to it or else you're wasting your time. Um, and Absolutely. I'm obviously, I drank the Kool-Aid years ago, um, I'm, I'm a huge believer in it, but it's, it's not always right. Maybe that's not to steal your thunder, there are reasons not to use an affiliate link at certain Absolutely. times. Absolutely. So I think to recap on that is, is that if anybody's thinking about um, connecting Amazon Associate or other affiliates into their universal book links, I highly recommend taking the time to truly <coughs> understand it. Um, for I saw a couple of heads nod when I talked about uh, sending out an email with Amazon Associate. If you don't know that simple rule, you could lose it real quick. So really dig in and understand that. Now, we talked about uh, analytics. And there's a lot of really cool things that go beyond just giving the shopper the ability to get the book from the market they want, from the location they want. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things that an author can learn by using these links. Uh, let's go ahead and start with you, Jesse. So there's two sides of it, right? So you, just universal book linking tool, um, we, to make our services work, we have to 
intercept it or not intercept it. We have to read the request that comes from your browser to the server, which tells us a lot of information for, for us nerds that, that, build, that build these things. IP, which can then be turned into your uh, location as one of them, and of course we'll report back where your clicks are coming from. But also the user agent of your browser, which can tell us what device you're on, uh, which browser you're using, uh, which operating system, uh, as well as language in the browser as well. So the gist is our, our reporting, just at the universal book level, can give you some pretty good insights into who your readers are, <coughs> what countries they're coming from, what their native language is, you know, are they, um, yeah, what, what browsers they're using, et cetera, are they privacy conscious, they're using Fire, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's only one side, but again, by hooking up associates, you can also get some really good information onto what's being sold, you know? You're recommending your book, but you see that a lot of people are buying TVs, or toasters, or whatever it may be. Or buying right. your competitor's yeah. book. Or <laughs> you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're late by going somewhere else. You still have a commission, but there's, there's things to be learned. Or okay. buying really, really weird things. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the others a romance yeah. author win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't identify your as quickly. You can't identify an individual who goes and converts so that it's, it's anonymous, but you can learn a lot about humanity from it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in case right. that nobody knows this, but on Amazon Associate, like like we said, if somebody clicks on a link and buy and they, and even if they don't buy whatever it is you link to, they buy anything within 24 hours, you can actually see a list of all the things purchased. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what they're kind of referring to with products or things like that, that it's like, wait a second. But also, that is just kind of jump in there on that. It's really good information to note that if you keep sending people to the certain book and then your readers are buying these books, you can use that information for your Amazon ads. Uh, if you know that there's a strong connection between the two, it's great information. Yeah. So just Amazon also, like Universal Book Links, we, you can create a different link and those links can off-point the same thing, so different campaigns, different categories can give you, again, that country, you know, device, et cetera. But you can take a, a step further and do that with associates as well. Uh, Amazon Associates, by default, gives you 100 different tracking IDs. So you can assign a different tracking ID per campaign, per link. Uh, again, depends on how granular you want to go. You can get this information coming back. So one romance novel was able to sell this amount of, we're not going to talk about it, and this romance <laughs> There, there might be some, some lessons to be learned there if you really want to dive in. Yeah, yeah. Then I understand too that Helper, um, that Author oh, Helper Suite, yeah. has a lot of other capabilities as well that kind of set around it. Do you want to take a little bit? Yeah, Remember I mean, the two minute cook off? Yeah, no, I'm going to try. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, it's basically what I said before. I mean, because we, we provide links, we try to offer people a view into trends. So if you use a, a link on, you know, in a Facebook post or, um, you know, on your site, um, uh, you know, front uh, reader links link, um, you can see clicks from it, or say you give it to somebody to share on their <coughs> Facebook site. That's, that's a better example. Uh, you can actually say this was I put, you know, this was from, you know, Robin's site. That's why I'm creating the link. This is from Robin. So I'm putting this on Robin's site, um, or, she, or she's going to share it with. Them. So here's the link, Robin. So she goes out and she shares it on her, on her site, asking her to be careful with this link. You know, <laughs> um, and and so we can actually track who, you know, where, or a Twitter post or etc. We can actually track the link, and then you can start to see the sales, either increase, decrease, stay the same, if there's no you know, measurable difference from that particular link click, and then also add performance from Facebook and Amazon, uh, which we can talk about links and those <laughs> as well. You, yeah, that's, that's, be careful there, but, but we do import the ad data itself. So all, having all three of those, of those data points is really good at finding the, the trends, because you know, the most important thing is sales, right? The affiliate the affiliate link can show you actual sales because you can see conversions in the, in the report, which is amazing. You know, it's not 100% accurate, but it, it definitely gives you, you know, again, kind of a trend. This is on the Amazon dashboard. Um, so, but we want we kind of like we wanted to give people kind of an idea of how things are going, generally speaking. And, and if you have because the, that's the, first, the most important thing is sales. That's the most important data point. The second most important data point is a link. Whatever, and it's something that you have control over. It's really part of a cr critical part of your business. So if you treat that link with the, the, the weight it deserves, you can get a lot of data from it, whether you're using an affiliate link or not. Um, so that, that's kind of what we try to you can call it now. That, that's what we're kind of <laughs> trying to get that full circle uh, to follow the cost coming. So yeah. <laughs> just, to, just a yeah. step further on what Ben was saying, I think it's really important is around the analytics, right? Yeah. And, and you, you hit it right on the spot, just to reiterate, directional, Trending data is most important. Absolutes. 
we try really hard to make our analytics as accurate as possible, but the way you measure a click is different between every platform. Yep. Your analytics will never match something else. So they should be directionally the same, they should be in line to some degree, uh, but they're never going to match exactly. Yeah, Twitter bots, you know, like the bots can click on stuff. And, oh, at Facebook, yeah, you know, I've been multiple times yeah. to, you know, being, not being able to count. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's a little ridiculous, and because often we are the smaller players, we get our feet are held over the fire because our numbers don't match what Facebook says or Instagram yeah. says. And yeah. <laughs> we have no reason to lie to you. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. Ours might be more accurate, but just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you guys have, have dealt with all the different markets. You've dealt with Amazon, you've dealt with Barnes & Noble, you've dealt with iTunes, you've dealt with Kobo, you've dealt with all the other smaller ones as well. Which one is the one you dislike the most? Which one's been <laughs> the problem child of the market? Yeah. Do you really need a panel to answer that? Yeah. All right, no, no, I want to know this one. Which one? It's probably Genius Links and, and Book Linker. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think in general, I'm not going to pick on anyone, but in general, whenever a retailer changes the parameters by which the item page URL, because we, we validate that. We want to make sure when you put it in that we validate that it's legit. So that Because again, we're worried about the customer experience. They should get to a book. They should get to some place where they can buy the book. Yeah. If they don't, that's not a good experience. Yeah. So we're constantly validating. And then when a retailer changes them without giving us a heads up, that's... Mm -hmm. That's the worst. Yeah. Come and on, and it, which, which one yeah. changes <laughs> it? <laughs> it Come on, I was it out. Out. A, a bookshop just changed their, their parameters without telling any of us. Uh, I don't know if you guys ran into it and suddenly it's like, oh, it's not working. What the hell? Well, a bookshop had some. I mean, yeah. Love what they're doing, they, but they had their play program had some some challenges. How they? Yeah. yeah it, but but they changed when, when that that was the most recent one where oh the URL changed. Mm -hmm. Crap, we got to get on changing this. Ideally, you want you know for example, Kobo launched a new product yesterday. They give us a heads up before they announce it so our pop ops team can fix stuff. And ideally, it's nice. Hey, our URLs change. And I think when Nook audiobooks changed mm -hmm. the, the way the audiobook links worked, they sent us an email early on so our pop ops team and, and our the dev team could fix it. I don't, you probably got the notification. It's, right? it's all about the partnership, right? Yeah. It, it's building that relationship. And that's, you know, again, my background is, is deeper in affiliate marketing than it is, is, is writing. Um, I'm, yeah, probably the, the lesser written person here at this, this uh, panel, but um, the, having that relationship is absolutely key. Uh, I, and again, completely, uh, I, I drank the Apple Kool-Aid early on. I, I spent time at, at Apple HQ. I managed their affiliate program. So if you ask me to compare Amazon Apple, I obviously have a very, very biased response. <laughs> Apple treats us like humans, and Amazon doesn't. But um, outside of that, it's, it's just building those relationships, knowing who's there so that you, you do get a heads up. And, and some retailers just, no matter how hard you try, I continue to forget about you. Um, or others are very excited to, to work closely with you because obviously we are, if we do our job well, it helps everyone that's on our ecosystem, which yeah. helps them sell more books the other day. Yeah. But it's unfortunately very much a relationship driven business. Some some retailers, you don't have the time to build a relationship with their account managers because they're- Exactly. People coming in and out. So we have six more minutes before uh, we run into uh, question and answer here. Okay. Um, but one of the there's two questions that I really want to drive towards, and this is one where I guess the gloves are starting to come uh -oh. up. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Where it gets a little weird. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. So okay. So we have four organizations standing before us. We've kind of gotten a really good understanding of what Universal Book Links are, some of the benefits, some of the pitfalls. But so we have four organizations. Uh, I would love, and again, remember the two minute, right? You tell to get the <laughs> car. Okay, it's coming, all right? Um, representing each one of your organizations, go ahead and let people know um, what your price is, price point, what do you offer, and who is the right person for your uh, product? And then then I got a follow on question that's <coughs> even darker. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> so go ahead. We'll start with you. Yeah, like so, Booklinker is a completely free tool. Um, Nearly everything on the platform is going to be automatically generated for you. Um, you just have to choose which custom link that you want to build. But other than that, it's pretty much a done for you service because we recognize that, you know, I heard one of the panels earlier this week that you're writing 10,000, 15,000 words a day, and you, you probably don't want to spend extra time figuring out all the marketing. So, Booklinker is completely done for you. It's, it's a free service. And, you know, it's not crazy on the analytics or the tracking tools. It's just for authors that want to write and 
have some help in the marketing department and get the benefits of a universal book link that will patch up a lot of the inefficiencies in the online shopping experience. Mm -hmm. You do offer uh, Apple affiliate, right? Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Bookstoread.com is free. You don't have to publish through Drafts Digital to take advantage of it. If you do, we have automated back matter where we can have also bots in the back of your book. You can feature, choose to spotlight that you have a teaser for the next uh, book in a series or whatever book you want to link them to. And we will automatically update that for you if you take advantage of that service every time you add a new book. So again, you publish a new book. Okay, we'll, we'll update the back matter and send this off to all the retailers. Now, you don't need to publish through DDD to do it. You can have vanity URLs so if you go to bookstoread.com slash haunted hospitals. It's one of my traditionally published books and you see the links on all the sites. Also, my self-published books are there, folks not published through DDD. Uh, we have what I call Author Central for all the retailers. You can go to bookstoread.com slash Mark Leslie if you want to see all my books with the universal links. And the, one of the benefits of that is there's a follow this author page, very much like the one on BookBub, where if somebody follows the author, we will automatically, when, we, when we're publishing a book to a platform, we'll automatically notify those people that's decided, hey, dude has a new book out uh, on this platform, and we know you read on that platform, and we know you read that author, and you want to follow them. So we send those automated messages. And again, it's all free service. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, first of all, the, there, there's no conflict because these guys have amazing products <laughs> that we're trying to keep up with all the time. Um, we, we base, we're, uh, right now we have a coupon code 20 books 22 all two zero books, two two. Uh, we'll get you $179 per year, so that's $14.99 per month. We're not a free service. We don't have, uh, we have a couple of free um, kind of sites where you can kind of check the KENP page rate for the last I think, 12 months. Um, and kind of what, what we estimate the next one to be. So we have a couple of tools that are kind of nifty like that, but for the most part, we're a paid service. And I think I've kind of made it clear how we kind of differentiate ourselves. But in addition to those three um, things that we allow, the importing of ads, the creation of links, um, uh, and, and importing of sales, we also offer um, an ARC management team soft, uh, a service uh, it's in this built in, it's called Reader Teams. Uh, and that allows you to, you, if you do uh, beta readers or ARC teams, uh, we call them reader teams. You can bring in your readers uh, on one single page that just well, it lets them track the issues uh, from your book, the <coughs> reports or the edits, um, chapter by chapter. Uh, you can ask questions of your of your, uh, uh, your community. Uh, and they can give feedback on it. So that's one of our, our most popular tools. And we include things like page reads, a read through, uh, and series and sell through, as well as series read through. Uh, so you can really get it. <laughs> that's my favorite report because I can see you know, where my series is, is not converting to the next book and go back into that book and kind of uh, adjust things a little bit. So, so that helps a lot. And there's there's 25 tools total. Um, that, that, that Unfortunately, that coupon code has to go away on December 20th. Uh, we do have to, to uh, go to 24.99 a month after that. Yeehaw. So I just want to make it clear, you, you mentioned this. We're not here to compete against each other. That happens. Our goal is to take everyone that's not using a universal book link or not taking yeah. full advantage of the affiliate program and help you understand that one of us can help you out with that. So yeah, great people, great tools. We, we do slightly different things. He says that in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> Last night was very different. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just as you know, Booklinker is really geared towards the, the author that uh, doesn't love marketing, Genius Link is the flip side of that. Genius Link is, we really kind of consider ourselves a, a, a pro-marketing tool. We've taken a lot of the different challenges that uh, marketers run into and, and solved them with different tools inside the link. So uh, obviously authors and, and publishers are a key piece of our business, but we also work with a, a wide range of different marketing teams, et cetera. You know, again, we're very fortunate that you know Apple's marketing team is one of our clients. Amazon's marketing team is one of our clients. You have a whole bunch of affiliates, right? Just try to, like have, I saw a list of amazing Yeah, best. yeah, yeah. So it's, Link management, you know, Smarter Links for Commerce is, is kind of a tagline that, that's gone for a long time. And, you know, we really very much focus on helping the creator, you know, uh, make make a living from their craft. We want to help them, you know, be as efficient as possible, take that intent to, you know, purchase and make that that, um, that a seamless experience. So lots of different tools, you know, the choice pages, landing pages um, is, is a key piece of that. Uh, the, the link translation, link localization is, is something that we're, we're pretty keen about. We're on our fifth patent on that now. It's something we really pay attention to. Um, but there's A-B testing, you can, um, uh, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of different tools, and those that love marketing would love to, to walk you through that. Uh, ben, ben kind of, you know, through, through the column there. Uh, normally we have a 14-day free trial. Anyone in here, uh, what we're happy to uh, push that out, make it, make it a, uh, 
What did you hear? Can I take down your, your code? Uh, December, <laughs> <laughs> December 20th. We have, a, we have a 30 day free trial. I'm going to go to January. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we do require a credit card. Unfortunately, our, our platform has gotten uh, large enough that has attracted uh, the attention of some spammers. So we have a pretty, yeah. a pretty in, uh, intent uh, team to keep an eye on that. And yeah. it turns out, adding a valid credit card is a great way to weed out spammers. Does that lead to? Does that lead to some of the negativity? A free tool online leads to people who have access to free tools online will cheat and lie and steal, mm -hmm. and the corrupt people will use them. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the challenges we all have to face. Now, yeah. someone puts in a credit card, well, cheaters and liars can do that too. Absolutely. But that's a, that's a thing, right? Yeah, is, yeah. is the, uh, we can't just add a store automatically, we have to validate it, because anyone can go out there and do anything, and we don't want someone to go and create books to read link that leads to a place that's going to spread a virus, or it's going to send you to some, you know, uh, other type yeah. Content. So just to right. riff off that for a second, right? Our our domains that those links are built off of, you know, gni.us, you know, mybook.to. Um, when those domains get get a, a shade of gray, you know, thrown over them for something spammy, that reflects negatively on everyone that's using the platform. Exactly. So right. yeah. the health of our domain is most paramount, yeah. and it's, it's and we work hard on that. Exactly, <laughs> and that's I guess you know, there are reasons you know four of us are here, where there are other you know, yeah, not. There are other providers in the industry. There's ones that have, have fallen as well, um, and it's often because they they lose track of who's using their links, and unfortunately, some bad people do, and, and that link is no longer worthwhile. Facebook will reject it. Uh, there's there's other things where a bad link. So yeah, that domain reputation is is paramount. Real quick, I know we're running into the Q and A time, but I think it's important to point out that if you, as an author, if you're going to take away the time to generate these links, you want this to be on a platform that's going to last mm -hmm. uh, because you don't want to have to do this multiple times. Jesse mentioned earlier, you know, both platforms, Genius Link and Booklinker, have been around for 10 plus years. So <laughs> good chance of will be staying around. And you know, if you have some viral tweet with a Booklinker link in there, um, when people are looking at it years later, it'll still be accessible. So it's important to keep that in mind. All right, so we're into question and answer. Um, so let's go awesome. ahead. We'll start with you. Okay, so do you think there's a loss in convergence from sending someone to a website versus straight to the book? Can yes. I answer that? Always. <laughs> yeah, it depends what the website is. Um, you did study on that, didn't you? Oh, we, we've yeah. done a lot of it. Well, um, I mean, like, I'm thinking, like, obviously, one example is you're sending your newsletter, and you want to have an affiliate link or go to a page, et cetera. And so that's my example. Yeah, um, a couple different answers to this. One is depends on where they are in that funnel, purchase funnel. Um, we see this more with kind of physical products or, or more expensive products. You know, books tend to be a little bit more uh, cost effective. When there is some possibility that they want to jump and do some price comparison or that they think that there's somewhere else that they can buy it cheaper or more friendly for them, you will lose the conversion because they are going to abandon. Not everyone buys on Amazon. You know, obviously books, you know, it's, it's, it's a good possibility that they are, but um, there are other retailers. So if you don't give them the choices, they have to make that extra work to go forward, you'll often lose that conversion. On the flip side, we um, uh, HyperX is a um, uh, uh, electronics brand. Um, did a bunch of testing with us once upon a time. They were sending all their traffic to a web page. That web page spoke a lot about the products, and at the bottom of that page was the, the links to buy from all the different retailers. They were finding actually that things fell off pretty pretty radically because they people were wanting to buy with the links they had given them by dropping them to that web page. They were then falling off. So the optimization of the web page makes a world of difference. Um, yeah. It's not. When we started the business, we were under the assumption that the more steps in the process, the lower the conversion rate was going to be. And that's, a, that's unfortunately wrong. Um, and it took us a long time to figure that out. We built the whole geotargeting thing based off exactly that. And it turns out that that's a very myopic view. Look at the whole funnel uh, as, as an example. And you're, the more you control of it, the more you can push them through the funnel, and the better conversion rate you'll get. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And there's a case study on, on the Genesis site, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to look into it. <coughs> the Hyperx one was published on Entrepreneur a handful of years ago. Yeah. That as well. I mean, the, the, the product page for uh, on Amazon.com used to be great for selling books. Um, they used to, um, they, they, they spent a lot of their time and, and, and money. It's still, it's still good. It's just it's kind of fallen into the other category of uh, some of the other media and other products that they sell. So I think if you can provide an interim page that's really compelling that you know kind of sends them to just go to this page and click it which and there are some beautiful uh, pages um, uh, you know in the way you know kind of well designed good information 
and I, I think you're you're probably fine. But you don't want to make sure that experience is awesome. Yeah. So. Again, back to the test, we found that you you get more clicks by offering that and yeah. compelling them. Um, so you actually just yeah boost conversion rate. Two point two x is what we typically see. But that's the test. With that, we're higher priced items. So. It, I, Asterisk, grain of salt in regards to the books. <laughs> All right, next question. Yes. So, leading on from that, what would be your, your best practices for creating, would that be a landing page then rather than just the book page on your website as a bridge page between, say, an email um, and. You know, so, yeah, it depends on where, again, they're at kind of in the funnel. If you're ready to sell them the book, you want to get them there as quickly as possible. The bridge page obviously solves some, some loopholes. So, um, you can build a page. They're very simple. Um, we can build a page for you in a tenth of a page, though, I think that's one of the big hangups yeah. because not many people know that term bridge page. So, so bridge page, we call it choice page. It's an optimized landing page. Um, it's not a page on your site because a page on your site typically has at least 300 words of content, so it's SEO, blah, blah, blah. That content slows down that that path to buy. So yeah, we want it simple. Our choice pages uh, for both BookLinker and Genius Link are a logo if you want at the top, you know, the, the cover art, um, a description, a call to action, and the buttons. So there's very few words, very visual, works in you know, uh, a web browser on your mobile uh, versus you know, the, the, the browser on, on your, your desktop as well. So it's clean no matter what the size is, you know, getting mobile optimized, et cetera. So that's the kind of page that you're saying is like two exiting the potential from? From our experiments, yeah, yeah for testing. And that, that page is just automatically generated for you um, by these services where like when they click the link, they go with this page, figures out where your book is on the market, automatically creates it for you so that you can see the cover and you can see where you can buy it from. And there's nothing else distracting. There's no other thing there, which I think really helps with the conversion rates yeah. um, because there's nothing, there's no exit point, if yeah. you will. There's no click to read more or anything yeah. like that. It is truly, exactly. just choose your market yeah. and then there you go, you're gonna go. It saves people time. Another thing that we didn't talk about in here as well though. FTC is, disclosures, no. that's not what you're gonna say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. So another thing we didn't talk about though here is that um, when uh, each one of these books kind of has their own rules as well. Like for example, Amazon will have a hissy fit if you put in a iTunes link in a book, um, or the, the yeah. point, yeah. And oh, I mean, excellent point. Yeah. So you even if you wanted to, without using one of these, you can't just say, hey, you can find my book on this market, this market, this market, because Amazon will just lose their lunch. They'll just get other really retailers, mad. Other retailers, too. And, and they yeah. do the same thing. I, you know, all the other real, they don't like your their books, you know, their book on the market sending to another one. Anti-monopoly? <coughs> <Yeah. laughs> so in this case, using one of these allows you uh, to share all of those and be compliant. This way you don't have to format a version of your book for Amazon, a format for Barnes & Noble, a format for iTunes, and hope that the person only reads in those. Instead, you give them- There's a software tool for that. Uh, something like that. <laughs> so, but the point though is, is that it's one of those major benefits uh, in using this. And again, it automatically creates that bridge page, or that, that page, and they look incredible. So, and then that, uh, that bridge page is tailored to the person's Geographical location, so yeah. exactly. if they're in the US, they're going to get pointed at the US store. Right. Barnes and Noble is completely irrelevant to someone in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So it just makes it so much easier. You have a higher chance of sending them where they want to go. Yeah. All right, we have time for one more question. So, hold on, do we have one more plus five minutes? You mm. do. We started oh. earlier. Oh, oh, that's right. We did. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. we have two more questions. Let's go to the gentleman in the back there. Um, can you speak to Amazon attribution links? <laughs> instead of using the, um, <laughs> I would like to yeah, yeah well, then on in, leading the charge there. Well, it's it's in beta. Their their the, uh, attribution is in beta on Amazon, and we're doing a beta version of supporting it on uh, Author Helper Suite as well. So attribution, uh, we had a discussion about this last night, but attribution, um, in our understanding, is a replacement for affiliate. So we'll we'll have to talk about that to figure out if that's actually the case, because again, it is early days. Um, so in our system, we only allow you to either use the attribute, and I'll tell, explain what that is in a second, or the affiliate ID, so you have to kind of choose. Now the attribute's a really powerful new tool. So one of the biggest issues that I think uh, authors have had in the last 10, so like 2000, since 2011, whenever the campaign took off, is getting some kind of transparency into what's converting, what's actually selling, what's actually leading to page reads, et cetera. Attributes allows that. So attributes is a brand new product that basically allows you to add a little uh, a tag, or a tag of your of your own choosing, basically to, to to track 
where you put it, where, where people are coming from, and did they convert? So not only will you be able to see you know, um, uh, some of the things that don't matter to you, you'll be able to see actual KDNP page reads that were done from that click, actual KDP sales that were from that click. Um, again, not as anonymous, no, we don't know who they are, but you can get a much clearer sense of, of conversion. So you say clearer sense, again, clearer sense. It's, not it's, it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Use it directionally. Yes, exactly. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to, you know, as far as the terms, that's something you please, if we're going to use attributes, please pay attention to what the terms are because they're probably changing right now um, while I, as I speak. Um, you want to make sure you're careful with it. You want to make sure you follow the rules because they are opening up uh, the, the data to us a lot more with attributes than, than with affiliate IDs, I think. We'll see. So that's, I think, a great point. Yeah. Associates gives you money but crap for data. Yep. Attribution gives you amazing data but, but no, no money. money. Exactly, exactly. All right, we have time for one more uh, question. Yes, in the back, with the glove. <laughs> Super cool glove, by the way. Um, okay, as much as you guys tell me you'll be in business for 10 years, um, <laughs> <laughs> not saying I don't trust you, but I always, I like like your have, yeah, <laughs> I always like to have stuff on a domain I own. Sure. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not a web page, a URL redirect, will that mess up analytics, or um, will that do anything that will Daisy chaining short links on top of each other is, yeah. is a practice that happens all the time. Don't yeah. do more than 25 because your browser is going to stop you at that. Yeah. Um, the, if it's a 301 or 302 redirect, the refer information should pass through, which is, you know, refer information is not as helpful as it once was because it falls off more and more often. Mm -hmm. There's technically not an issue with that. Again, we support Apple's marketing team. They often have to put an Apple branded domain. I think, and again, part of the ignorance here, we also support custom domains on our site as well. Mm -hmm. So you, instead of having to do that kind of daisy chain of, of uh, redirects um, with your domain, we can support that. So, and then we can also, of course, export your data. Uh, should you want to jump platforms, we can absolutely help you with that. And a custom domain makes that more portable. That being said, if you're taking advantage of some of our features, you may not find another platform that has all those features. We, all, we offer uh, your, your you know, banding URL. Your URL, you can use it. The only thing I would call Your URL or your, your domain? Your domain. Yeah, the sorry, domain sorry. and slide, yeah. you know, two different pieces but, you can customize. Yeah. But just be careful because it can slow things down. So if you use it in something like a Facebook ad or, or, you know, or the like, a slow experience can get just severed. So you might see that Facebook is you know delivering kind of OK and then something just drops off. It might be the amount of time it takes the reader, the customer, to get to their destination page. Uh, they like speed, uh, like, like Google, like Facebook, all of them like speed. So the more you slow it down, the more uh, risk you, you, you take that uh, that you might run into that problem. All right, with that, I think we have hit the end question. of our session. Um,